Alan, great talking to you, man. The last time I saw you, you were here in Toronto, and you were the surprise guest performing artist for Dean Brody, Tim Hicks, Big Show. What was that like for you, man? Because I know that place was packed. Super fun, and it's like it's great to get to work with Dean because you know he always tries to push the envelope of what kind of music you know is called country music or whatever, and so and sometimes that includes you know hip hop and and. and storytelling and movies and soundtracks and in my case he always likes to do you know some kind of celtic thing or whatever and it's just it's fun to be a part of it and with and i mean it's always fun to get to walk in someone else's backyard for a while and all that but especially when it's kind of like a genre that you're kind of on the edge of you know what i mean like and so it's, it feels like it's a whole new party you're getting asked to that you weren't asked to before <laughs> yeah but your party though man has been going on for so long do you look at yourself now as and i know you hate if i'm going to use this word icon because of so much what you've done with Great Big C, what you've done as an actor, what you've done as a solo artist, and now, as we're going to talk, as an author. I just, I'm, just, I'm just glad to be in the game, <laughs> to be honest with you. And you can call me anything you want after that, as long as you call me. And uh, um, for me, I, I'm always looking next. That's all I always think about. Like, and a friend of mine in the music business says it all the time. It's the most important word in the, in the music business is next. You know, and and so I just I'm I'm grateful to get some concerts and do them, and then move on to the next thing. And if that includes, you know, a little gig acting or a little gig on someone's fun movie or something, that's fun too. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I a well-rounded artistic life is a great privilege, you know. And you know, that said, if it all had to go away tomorrow and I just had to play concerts, that'd be pretty wicked too, you know. Any one of the things would be good, but concerts is, remains my favorite thing. Yeah, but we're not going to complain about that, man. So you can keep doing the concerts all you want. But look, my friend, a new founder in Canada. Newfoundlander. 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 See, I'm even saying it wrong. Um, why did you decide to do this? Because this isn't your first book, is it? It's my second book, and it's kind of a follow-up in a way to the first one. Because the first one really tracks my young life in my little fishing town at Petty Harbor and how it led me to the big city of St. John's and eventually to getting Great Big Sea. And that's where it kind of finishes off. This one kind of picks up there when Great Big Sea started. And then this one really is a, a, more, more a journal, really, of what my first trip across the country looked like and what Canada looked like me, to me, a fella in my early 20s, who'd never really been anywhere, you know, and had nothing really other than Petty Harbour and St. John's to compare the entire country of Canada to. And, you know, and, and it's a weird lens to see the country through because, of course, I'm from one very far edge of it, like all the way over there, and then... Also, sort of historically and politically, kind of, I'm, I'm the first generation Canadian. You know, my mom and dad were born in a different country than me. We were born in the same town. Nobody moved anywhere, anything, but they were born in a country called Newfoundland, and I was born in a country called Canada. You know, and so we were really the first generation of the Doyles and Petty Harbour who were born Canadians. And, and so we were the first ones to really kind of go see it and explore it as our own country. You know, and so it was kind of a a really un and you combine that, of course, with the fact that the lens I was seeing the country through was actually out the window of a band van, you know, and it, it sort of all adds up to be one interesting sort of window to see the country through. So we pick up a couple of things because really what you just said, here's your first time seeing the second biggest country in the world. You're crossing this, okay, in probably the most meager uh, vehicles that you could have, um, and plus... You're in a you're a new band in an industry that is in the vicinity of changing. So you have all these things going on. Reading this book, all I kept thinking was, my God, how did you stay <laughs> in this business after everything you went through? Because it was so much fun, you know, through all that, all the change and all the different times and the challenges of getting across the country, you know, especially in the earliest days of Great Big Sea, man, it was a riot. We were having the time of our lives, you know, and and. We were, you know, it was four guys in some kind of squalor or another in a car, but we didn't care about any of that, you know. We were eating Easter cream eggs made too often. And, uh, and, and don't forget your uh, submarines. Sub sandwich. <laughs> and and it was just fun, you know, because we were getting to play gigs, you know, and, and getting to play songs that we had. But, of course, we were getting to sort of represent Newfoundland, right, and getting to bring Newfoundland music to the country. And it was a real, it was a real thrill to make it to the prairies, you know, to see people in Saskatoon. You know, singing Lukey's boat. You know, it was, it was fantastic, and I still love it. But but one one of the, I don't want to give too much away with the book because I want people to read this. But there's one point I have to make out, and you know what it's going to be. 
the purple dinosaur. That is a crazy story. I don't think I've ever talked to any band that could say that they opened for Barney. We yeah we we got we landed this great gig at the Salmon Festival back in Central Newfoundland in 1994, I believe, and it was we were opening for the Rankins, and it was a big gig, and it was rocking, and they were huge, and it was heroes of ours, and we great, we opened up for them, and it was awesome, and we partied into the Saturday night watching the Rankins from the side of the stage, it was incredible, and around midnight we learned that we had to come back the next day and play at the kids' show, opening for the Purple Dinosaur, and. You know, to make it long, we were too far into the evening to re- to, uh, <laughs> to to re- to to pull the, put the brakes on in any successful way. So the early cold hard light of day found us back at the same site on a rainy, misty Sunday morning, trying to jam out some songs for kids that were there to see Barney. And as I say in the end of that little chapter, there's like I can tell you this: there is no crowd in the world harder to play for than the crowd who've come to see the Purple Dinosaur. <laughs> It's you know it's a great story, but then again, like I said earlier, this really does show uh, a lot. People think that is glamorous for artists and bands to be out there and performing across Canada and around the world and whatever. It really is tough. It's fun when you, it's in your heart, but at the same time, it's it's tough. The other thing I love about this book too is you you as we read it, it's like we could hear you saying the words. You put it in as yourself. Yeah, well, it's, uh, I learned when I was doing the first book, you know, people said, oh, God, it's really your voice. And I said, yeah, it's kind of the only voice I have, to be honest with you. Like, <laughs> if I was a good enough writer, I might be able to sound like someone else. But, I'd, you know, I'd, for my own satisfaction, I've come to find in songs and in books and everything, and even when you're acting, like, the more of you that you bring to it, the better it is, you know, and the more you can make your a scene in a movie like it's coming out of your mouth, not your character's mouth. And more like, you know, the songs, the things you sing about are things that you would say and you believe. And the, and the things that are in your book sound like something, a story that you would tell. That's that's always better and never worse. I could only imagine, what was it like, though, you had probably even tons more stories. How did you cut down to the stories that we get a chance to read? That, that was a much great help from the editors and stuff here at Random House Canon Doubleday. And, like, the editor lady, Martha, helped me a lot with that stuff. And... Because I could have wrote ten books just about road stories, you know, and it's just, and perhaps I will. But <laughs> what it, the, the whole idea with this one was to create an arc that took us across the country. And some of the stories I picked, I picked because I thought they were the funniest or whatever. And some of them are, you know, I picked because they sort of move the band plot-wise from one province to the next, and and all really just, you know, sort of. And in most cases, I. I went with the thing that was, when I cast my memory back, I went, what, okay, the first time we went to New Brunswick, what's the first thing I can remember? And I would I would make notes like that going, this is the first thing that comes to mind. And I would be honest about it, and if I could, the more I could include those first impressions, that's, that's sort of what made the book. How do you think now, when you look back and you read this book, how do you think these stories and what you went through made you the artist and the person that you are today oh it's com- it's completely you know I and mean, this part of my life you know this is really this book kind of really takes place between 1993 and you know 2003 I mean, it's about a decade really and that's just around when you and i met it was around then that's right yeah when we started doing stuff around lighting canada and like and you know that combined with you know my young life in petty harbor you know First of all, my young life in Petty Harbor was I learned so many great lessons that carried me around the rest of the world. And then Sean and Bob and Daryl, I mean, I couldn't have found better partners, right? I mean, they were they perfectly had their head in the world of traditional Newfoundland music and knew a lot more about that than I did. They had been in a band, a quite a successful band in Newfoundland before Great Big Sea started, so knew way more about the business of being in a band than I did. And it was just, you know, I, I was very lucky to to get to meet them when I got to meet them and their vision and their, you know, goal to get across the country was, you know, something that I probably could never even dreamed of. Wow. Wow. But not just a book though. There's new music coming out, correct? Yeah. New, new record account came out just a couple of days ago. Uh, week at the warehouse recorded it at the Brian Adams studio in Vancouver with Bob rock. Oh, man. Uh, 
For folks who don't know, Bob Rock is the man when it comes to producing. We talked about this before, too. I know he's worked with Jan Arden and a lot of other artists. What did he bring out in you in this album that maybe something that you didn't have or know that you had in you? Just excitement of playing music, like the way, I mean, you think, I'm a pretty excitable guy and I'm pretty grateful, you know, and excited when I get a day in the studio or on stage with my band or whatever. No, none of us are close to the excitement level that Bob Rock has. He's to this day, it's amazing. There's a man who's produced hundreds of records, sold millions of copies of records, and still walks into the studio every day and can't believe his luck. You know, it's, it's an incredible thing to watch a man of his pedigree still, you know, literally take a knee in front of a sound desk every day and go, thank you, whoever, whoever gives me a chance to do this for a living, you know. I love it. So great. I love it. Uh, tour going to be with uh, happening with this team? Yeah, the tour dates are all coming up. Um, they're all in, just announced a couple of days ago. We start uh, for the week at the Warehouse Tour. Or it's called the Come Out With Me Tour in support of this record. It starts in Seattle on the 8th of uh, January and comes all over Canada right after that, all over the U.S. and, and on and on and on and on. So allendoyle.ca, yeah, you'll find it. One last question. Um, if you could go back in time to when this guy was going to start this tour, what advice... Would you give him, or would you give him any advice at all? I, I would always, I always say the same thing to that question. I wouldn't say a word to him. <laughs> yeah, I would just sit back and watch him because he's about to have the time of his life. And you know, and also say like, I wouldn't, you know, I, the, the the joy in retrospect for that guy is he didn't know what was coming up, and he didn't know any shortcuts, and so I wouldn't want to tell him any. I love it. I love it. Yeah. My friend, congratulations, and. Uh, Hey, have fun with the tour, too, but I can't wait for book three. Thanks so much, man. Thank you. <laughs>